Hey guys, Dylan from the Geek Duo here, and today I'll be bringing you my reaction to Shadow Hunters Season 2, Episode 20, the finale of this season titled Besides Still Water. The Shadow Hunters battle an army of demons released by a dimensional rift, forcing them to choose between defending New York and stopping Valentine. So, somehow. This dimensional rift is going to be related to the Silly Queen. At least I'm assuming because of how the last episode ended. She does have doorways between different realms, as we know. Since there was that whole no shadow hunter realm that we went to in season one. And uh, Malion did say that she has many such doorways. So... Yeah, most of the other realms would be overrun by demons. They come in, they leech all of the energies out of a world, turn the sky dark, they burn and salt the land and everything. Then they move on to the next world, then the next world. There's also the fact that each of these worlds are a branch timeline from... The main world, yeah, this series does have several different versions of Earth that we see in the books. And slightly touched upon on this, with Fairy actually being a sort of hub through which you can access different realms. Because Fairy exists in its own midway place, so it would make sense for... Valentine to have gotten the Silly Queen's help in releasing demons from one of those rifts while he goes and raises the angel who can then wipe out said demon threat. And yeah, who knows? I guess we'll um, find out if that is actually what happens in 3, 2, 1. Also, I don't think I actually addressed as to why I'm so far ahead with my reactions. Because I'm about to go on a um, month and a half holiday. And so, I sort of need to be building a backlog of several different things to release while I'm gone. Which includes pre-watching the stuff that comes out before it. So that I can then, you know, react to other stuff that's going to be released then. Hmm. Okay, so it's not quite Valentine who's opening set the rift. It's Jonathan seeking his mother's help. I don't think we actually know who his mother is in this. I can't remember if it's been said, so... I'm sorry, what? That was like broad daylight. How the hell did that demon do anything in broad daylight? He should have instantly gone up the, in smoke like a vampire.
it. Did you really expect anything else to happen? Well, that just sounds like the fog of lost souls. Well, you know that um, woods from Once Upon a Time, that also seems like an apt comparison. No, you won't. You want to know how it's out in the daytime? Gonna have to, um, Space Invaders this. Shoot where it's gonna be, not where it is. And... Gross. And that's what I was expecting. You cannot lie. And how are you going to do that if you can't get out of here? There is the one thing about Clary's portal room in this. It's a lot more versatile than in the book because she actually had to draw it on a wall to turn that into the portal. This you can just draw it midair and just conjure it anywhere.
He knows her brother. Definitely no reason for Alf. Now it's really weird that they've sort of switched up the dynamic because it was actually Alec that um, put a break on their relationship or at least caused it. because he wanted to know more about um, Magnus's last relationships and Magnus was very cagey about his past. Mm-hmm. I had forgotten about that till I, um, was searching up the name Malachi the a couple episodes ago. <clears throat> Not as silly scouts you are. too much. Mm-hmm. And it hasn't actually gone all as far into that whole mindset as it did in the book. Wrong. There yeah, was already warlocks. Seelies also existed from the dawn of the earth. That was not how the subtitles said it. Asmodai, the demons that um, work under Asmodeus.
Well, it is a good thing that um, Magnus wasn't one of the ones holding the wards open all this time. So that he actually has his full strength. Maybe run away from the person who needs all their concentration. Did you notice there was something missing from that beach scene when they arrived? Did you agree, Simon? What did you do, Simon? It's not a fucking baseball bat, mate. Hmm. 
strain of one parapetite iron can very well kill the other. Interesting, we never actually got to see Alec's reaction to Jace's death in the book. Hmm. Wonder how this is going to work. Fifty foot tall towering spectacle.
You got them biblical on this side. You have at least wiped it off before you did that. I think this conversation is almost exactly taken from the book. I'm sure now you're right. There's some fairies there as well.
is she planning? Creepy. Oh. Right. They are fairly bat like. Is she going to have her one distinct feature? Not quite see. Okay, well, um, that was somewhat different from how it happened in the book. Uh, what was this episode called? Um, Besides the Water. Because I want to see who a few of those voices were. Um, since when was Raphael in this episode? Okay. So I'm assuming. Tara Westwood was the voice of the woman at the end, since it's only credited with woman. I'm surprised they didn't reveal the name. Ah, yep. Okay. Why she only has one episode other than this, it's very interesting, but... There you go. Oh, that was Anthony Ed as Raziel. Why could I not pick out Charles's voice? Like, it's a very distinct voice. Hmm. Okay, so somewhat different from the book. In the fact that there wasn't like this big massive war that had the Nephilim and factions of downworlders fighting side by side against the demon army raised by Valentine. So how it happened in the book is after Valentine killed Older Tree, he the council agreed to let um, the Downworlders fight with them. I can't remember if this is before or after Malachi was revealed to be the traitor. I don't... Yes, I do. I do remember how he died. He died when the um, roof of the, the Courts Hall shattered and he died in the fallen glass. And that was exploded by demons. So they then go... They... Um, get the downworlders to help. Clary actually creates a new, another rune, which is a union rune that can be put onto downworlders, and it shares their abilities with the Nephilim, who it pairs with. So you actually get um, Nephilim being able to use the speed of vampires, the strength of werewolves the 
agility of fairies and all of that. I don't quite remember how it worked with the warlocks because I don't think it transferred magic. But yeah, so you had um, Jocelyn and Luke paired up together. You had Alec and Magnus paired up together. You had various different Nephilim paired up with the Downworlders sharing abilities and everything going up against these demons that were raised by Valentine. And Valentine's plan was to um, raise the angel Raziel, wipe out all the demons, all the downworlders, and any shadow hunter that was not allied with him. And that is why Malachi did side with Valentine purely to save his own ass from the fact that Valentine was going to destroy all the Nephilim that weren't allied with him. Yes, when we actually get to the lake, Jace goes there after having fought Sebastian and everything. He does get killed by Valentine. I forget the exact reason as to why Valentine kills him. I think it has to do with the summoning ritual, like he uses Jace's blood to do the um, protective circle that he stands within, and also the um, ritual runes needed for the summoning of Razu. Because it wasn't just the drop the things in the lake and he rises, you actually had to do a specific summoning thing where you actually inscribe your name into the runes so that Raziel is bound to the person who summons him and has to do what that person requests. One thing that that person requests, I should say. So I'm pretty sure he uses Jace's blood to do that. And then while he's talking with Raziel, Clary, who is there and bound up in that, she actually etches out Valentine's name and replaces it with her own. So when Valentine tries to demand something of the angel, he's not the one that it has to listen to. It has to listen to Clary. And another thing I've been getting is whether it's Clary or Raziel who kills Valentine. That's a very easy search. Um, status, deceased, obviously. Um, yeah. Raziel kills Valentine with an uh, angel's arrow. He apologizes to Clary for killing her father, though she was more upset about Jace's death, and then she uses her wrist, wish to bring Jace back to life. We don't actually see Alec's reaction to Jace dying or anything. In fact, we don't even know if he knows that Jace died. Like, obviously he felt something weird with his Parabatai rune and everything, but it's never really touched on that he knows. And then yes, they do keep it secret about the fact that he actually died from everyone, so that sort of leads to him not knowing. There was no deal for Simon to go into the silly court or anything once all this was over. As I said, the Queen was allied with the Shadow Hunters and in the big get together at um in Idris after the battle, she actually approaches Clary and she tries to get Clary's to sign off on Hey, since you're now bringing a downworlded representative onto the council, would you put in a word that Malion 
be my stand-in on this council. And Claire is just like, fuck that, I don't like you, I'm not doing you any favours. And the Queen's just like, the Queen says something passive-aggressive about her love for Jason, everything, how it wouldn't work out and that, because realistically the Queen's a bitch. I'll just put that out there. Like, even more so than she is in this show. But yeah, so there's no Simon going to Fairy or anything. The Queen only has that small interaction for the whole war. Other than, you know, sending her soldiers to fight alongside the Shadowhunters and everything. After the battle, they need to elect a new... Inquisitor because Alder Tree was killed, so they do Robert Lightwood. Don't know if that's coming up or not. They need to get a new um, console that goes to Gia Penhello, Elaine's mother, Sebastian's aunt. Yeah, who hasn't even been introduced in the show yet, so don't know if that's going to her. Um, anything else? Well, I mean, there is one big thing. There's no Mark of Cain. So you remember a couple of episodes back when the Warlock had that mark on his arm. And I'm like, is that? No, it can't be. And I'm just, until they said, oh, it's a map of the ley line, I was not sure as to whether that was what I thought it was or not. Because that looked very much how the Mark of Cain is described in the book. And just before the final battle, since Clary isn't going to be there, Simon doesn't get paired up with anyone. So what Clary does is she draws the mark of Cain on Simon's forehead. You know that whole, any damage done to you shall be dealt back sevenfold? Yeah, that is what she gives to Simon. And you actually see it in... The battle where a demon attacks him and just pfft, instantly and this actually comes up over the next two books it's not a part of the th like the sixth book but yeah it's actually plays pivotal part in Simon's story for book four and book five so, I'm very curious as to how they're going to work around that. Then again, there was no... There was no Sebastian surviving the plunge into the river and then using his blood to open a portal into Edom and summoning forth all these demons that formed into his mother. And that is mother as in, she's the closest he has to a mother figure because Jocelyn was not a mother figure to him. Like she had him, she cared for him while he was a baby and then thought he died. So he was raised by Valentine, then sent to Edom where he got a new mother figure. That's this person. And well... I am surprised that they didn't give her name in this. I don't think they've ever said her name in the show, but it was actually it was actually said in the flashbacks in book three when they learned from Ethuriel whose blood was actually gotten for the injection into Jonathan. That they think is related to Jace. They actually find out that it is a greater demon. One of the greatest demons. And yeah, so they think that it's Jace. Speaking of the greatest demons. That, that relates to the Fallen. As in... 
those who became the princes of hell. And I took issue with two things in this episode. One, the fact that those demons were out in daytime. That is the biggest issue with this episode. And two, they said that no downworlders were around before Nephilim. And that's just factually incorrect. Like, it was a warlock who helped Jonathan Shadowhunter, his, um, yeah, helped Jonathan, his sister, and his best mate, summon Raziel, so they could become the first three Nephilim. They had a warlock there with them. And fairies are said to be the, un the unholy union of angels and demons, or they sprung into creation when the angels fell. As in, Lucifer and the other princes of hell, when they fell to earth, or more, fell past earth into whatever realm they went into, that created the um, fairies. So they've been around even longer than the warlocks have. And it's only the um, werewolves and vampires that sprung up after... Um, what was it? Was it 10th century or 11th century? I can't, I can't remember which. But yeah. Whichever one it is. They sprung up after that. And so... It was just wrong. I guess it is simplified for this show so they don't really want to go into the, like the minutia also it's never actually said in the mainline series that there was a warlock or anything that's actually in the supplementary books I'm fairly certain I forget if it's Shadowhunter Codex or one of the anthology ones yeah. And the origin of fairies has always been up for debate, so it's probably easiest to just say, oh yeah, all of them were created afterwards. But who knows? Uh, but yeah, that ends season two and the Valentine arc. I guess you could say because this is the first three books done next is the that was probably a loud noise next is the after Valentine arc I'm not going to spoil as to what that is but yeah I'm not going to spoil who is in charge of the next arc but very interesting. Anyway, I'm going to end this one here. I'll catch you the next one.